Hi guys, it's Shamsa and welcome back to my little kitchen. Now, ajari chicken gets its name from the word ajar, which means pickle. Now, this dish is inspired by the flavours of pickle, which are sour, tangy and spicy. Today, I'm sharing with you a recipe which is restaurant inspired. It's for ajari chicken made at home my way, better than any restaurant out there. Now, before I try this and tell you guys how it is, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and show your support. Turn your bell notifications on for all things cooking. And now the taste test. Now I'm serving mine up with just plain basmati rice. You can have these with naan. The, the masala, the sauce, the curry is runny enough to be able to have it with just about anything. So here goes. Ooh, absolutely gorgeous that. Just look at that, wonderful. Let's dig right in. Soft chicken, absolutely super, super soft. And here goes. Bismillah. Mmm. Oh. That has the perfect tanginess. And I can taste the ajar, I can taste the spices in there. That ajar masala that we put in elevates this dish. It is absolutely fantastic and it's got a spice kick coming through. Ooh, love it. If you like this dish and you order it at restaurants regularly, you can make this at home now and have it. Guys, leaving you with this one, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, recipe. Please let me know in the comments below when you get around to trying it, how you found it. And now we're gonna run through the ingredients with you quickly and then we'll start cooking. So the ingredients you're going to need is 700 grams of chicken breast fillet cubed into medium pieces. You could use thigh meat for this dish as well. I've got here two medium onions which are finely sliced. These weigh 350 grams in weight. Now I've got two lots of tomatoes here. I've got tinned tomatoes and I've got fresh tomatoes. The reason I'm using tinned today um, as part of the recipe is because I had tin tomatoes to use and I didn't want them to go to waste. Now the total amount of tomatoes needed for this recipe is 350 grams so you can either use um, just just the, uh, the tin tomatoes or you could use the freshly chopped tomatoes that's entirely up to you as long as you have 350 grams worth of tomatoes there. I've got here half of a cup of oil this is approximately 125 milliliters and we have these whole spices. Now for ajari chicken, you have an essential ajari uh, spice blend that you use. And for that, you'll need four whole dried Kashmiri chilies. You can add more if you wanted to, but this is a mild dish. I've got here two tablespoons of coriander seeds, one tablespoon of cumin seeds, and one and a half tablespoons of um, fennel seeds here. I've got a quarter teaspoon of mustard seeds and the same of Metidana, which is fenugreek seeds. Now, if you don't have any of these two ingredients, you can leave them out. Um, it's the, the ajari masala has these ingredients in, but I've tried it without uh, when I'm recipe testing and it still works and the curry is still tasty. And we have some uh, spices here. I've got two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of Kashmiri chili powder, which is gonna add a really nice color and flavor, but the mild heat. For heat, I'm added one teaspoon of regular chili powder. I've got here one and a half teaspoons of sugar. The sugar is to balance that, that sourness, that ajari, that ajar masala that we're gonna add, that flavor, it's gonna balance it. So um, that's why we are gonna add sugar. And I've got here a quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder. Um, this recipe also requires a tharka, and for that you need um, a quarter teaspoon of mustard seeds, and I've got here half a teaspoon of golanji, which is nigella seeds. And I've got here one frozen piece of ginger and garlic. If you don't have these, substitute with a tablespoon of the paste or puree. Um, I've got here, uh, for garnishing purposes, we've got uh, fresh uh, ginger juliennes. Again, optional, you don't have to add them in, but they do look nice. Fresh coriander to garnish right at the end. Water as and when we need to. And you can't have a jarry chicken without the ajar and I recommend using the Fudge Core brand. This is hot mango pickle. It's not really that spicy, but it'll add a nice um, heat to the thing, uh, to the dish. So mango pickle, they're in small pieces, perfect for this recipe. And you can add anything from one to two tablespoons in. 
So let's start cooking. Right, the first thing we need to do is we need to go off and we need to grind our whole spices down to a fine powder. So do that and just set that aside and then we'll move on to the next step. Right, got my pot on the hob. My heat setting is currently on a seven, which is a medium high heat setting for my hob. So I've added approximately 80% of the oil. I've left around two tablespoons for the tarka later on. So I'm just going to set that aside. And now we're just going to give it a couple of minutes to heat up. So the oil is nice and hot now. And I'm going to add my onions in and we're going to fry them until they're lightly golden brown in colour, which should take approximately eight to ten minutes. So I'll show you how they look once they're done. Right, so the onions are now ready and they've taken on a really nice light golden brown colour. You can see that they've started to caramelise. And we can now add our tomatoes. So in with the fresh tomatoes and also the tin tomatoes and also the ginger garlic and I'm just going to add a splash of water as well right okay so now just pop the lid on and just allow the onions and the tomatoes to cook for approximately six to eight minutes and my heat setting is currently on a six, which is a medium heat setting for my hob. So the six to eight minutes will allow the tomatoes to release their own natural moisture and juices and it will break them down. And also the tomato, the onions will break down as well. And I'll see you guys back in around eight minutes time and show you how they look. So coming back to this, it's had eight minutes of cooking time and I'm just going to close my hob now. And you can see that the onions and the tomatoes have cooked down really, really nicely. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this from the heat and just set it aside and just let it cool down a little. And then I'll transfer this to a food processor and I'll blend it until it's nice and smooth. And I'll show you how it looks once it's done. But just allow it to cool down before you actually do that. So I've ground the masala until it's nice and smooth. And that's how it looks. And... I've also finely ground the whole spices to a powder. So this is the Ajari blend which we're going to be using and I'm just going to set that aside. So I'm using the same pot. You don't need to wash this. I've currently got it on the hob. My heat setting is currently on a six. And I'm just going to add the remaining oil which is around two tablespoons worth in and just let that heat up so it's nice and hot. Right, so when the oil is nice and hot, I'm going to start by adding the mustard seeds and the nigella seeds and just allow them to splutter a little. So straight in with that. And this process is quite quick now. And now we're going to add the spices into this. And we're going to add two tablespoons of the, uh, the Ajari powder masala that we're using. So straight in. We're just going to give everything a quick mix. So when I say this process is quick, we're going to do this because we don't want to burn the spices like that. And now we're going to add our masala that we've blended straight in. And just give that a mix. It smells amazing. Oh. Okay, what we need to do now is we need to cook this masala out until the oil starts to separate and come to the surface and around the edges. Now, looking at this, you might think that there's not a lot of oil in this, but trust me, once you start cooking this, it will release it, the uh, oil and it will uh, come to the surface and around the edges. So it will take approximately five to six minutes to do that. So just keep stirring it and just allow that oil to separate. My heat setting is still currently on a six and after six minutes, I'll show you what we need to do next. Right, so coming back to this, it's been cooking away for six minutes and you can see that the oil has started to separate and come up to the surface and around the edges. It's taken on a beautiful deep dark color. Now at this point, we are ready to add our chicken in. So in we go with that and we're just gonna give it a stir and mix that through well. And we're gonna cook this on a low heat, first of all. I've just turned my heat down to a four for about three to four minutes. Just make sure you stir that well. And for the next three to four minutes, just keep stirring it until it changes color and it becomes nice and pale, white in color. So coming back to the chicken, it's been cooking away for approximately four minutes and on a low heat setting. And you can see that it's slightly pale in color. Now the next step is to pop the lid on and allow it to cook for a further five to six minutes on a low heat. 
Now, this five to six minute window will allow the chicken to start releasing its all natural moisture and will cook it further. So keep your heat setting on four, which is a low heat setting for my hob and just allow it to cook for five to six minutes and I'll show you what you need to do after the six minute mark. Right, okay, so it's been six minutes that the chicken has been cooking it away and I'm just gonna remove the lid to show you. So you can see now it's released some of its moisture there. And what we're going to do next is we're gonna add water into this to cook this further. Now, all depends how much of a runny curry you want. That's entirely up to you. You can add anything between one cup, which is 250 milliliters to one and a half cups. I'm actually gonna go in with around 250 milliliters, which is one cup exact of water, because I want a curry which I can scoop up with naan and pour over rice and 250 milliliters gives me the perfect uh, consistency for the curry. So I've added that in, 250 milliliters of boiled kettle water because you want the temperature of the curry to remain the same. So use boiled kettle water and it also is faster, uh, you know, cooking when you're using hot water because cold water obviously will cool down the temperature of the curry. So bring it back up to heat again, you can tell we've added boiling water into that so the temperature didn't drop as much. And again, the other thing we're going to do now is just pop the lid back on again and we're gonna allow this to cook away for approximately eight to 10 minutes. My heat setting is still currently on a four which is a low heat setting for my hob. For the next eight to 10 minutes, you don't need to do anything to this. In 10 minutes time, I'm gonna show you how it looks. It'll be ready to finish off. So I'll see you guys back then. Right, okay, so 10 minutes have passed and the Ajari chicken has been cooking away. And just look at that, the oil has separated and come to the surface and I'm just gonna give it a mix so you guys can see. And that masala is nice and thick, runny enough to be able to pour over the rice and enjoy and also to dunk your naan into that. Absolutely fantastic, smells amazing. And to finish this off, all we're going to do is we're gonna take our mango pickle um, or any pickle of your choice. And I'm just gonna take a tablespoon's worth and I'm just gonna add that in and just give it a mix. And you can add, like I said, as much as you want. This will just give it a really nice ajar taste to it. If you really wanted to leave this out, you could do, but then if you're making a jarry chicken, you have to follow this step and just mix that through. There's little bits of mango in there, small bite-sized pieces. So you'll get that when you take a spoonful. And to finish off, just add fresh coriander right on top like that, I'll just add that in and just give that a stir through that looks amazing if i may say so smells wonderful and there you have it guys my take on restaurant inspired ajari chicken at home so let me plate this up and give you guys a closer look <laughs> 